Welcome to uh, the webinar uh, for the Academy for Addiction Professional. And tonight we have a very special show. Uh, we're going to be talking about personality disorders. And within personality, personality disorders, does evil exist? And we're going to use one of the most famous villains in all of cinematic history um, to, uh, to discuss that. So the overview is, does evil exist in us? Defining what a personality is, because most people, um, they, they, uh, they, they think that a traits of a personality are a disorder, and that's not, that's not exactly true. Three common personality disorders, idealizing versus the value of treatment, right? So, so really the pie in the sky of treatment versus actually the nuts and bolts of treatment, we'll get into that. History of personality disorders as it relates to treatment and the five laws of uh, personality disorder that, that we will certainly get into. Uh, so a person's circumstances, are they a victim or are they, a, or are they just plain evil? So the person that we are profiling tonight, um, again, a very famous character in, um, in movie history, born into single parent home abused and mistreated no father figure taken from his mother at age 10 misdirected and misunderstood in his adopted family his only father figure which which um which he tried to mentor him unfortunately dies raised by his adopted brother who was really not ready to raise him finds his mother again, but she's beaten and raped to death. Confused by adults telling him he is special and he has a great calling, that he has potential. Loses a limb in a fight, others say he lost part of his humanity. Frustrated with his role in a young adult, adult, adulthood, wants to do more. Defiant, impatient with authority figures. Embraces relationship forbidden by others. Chooses the idea of power over others rather than love. And gives in, becomes a slave to his anger and becomes a rageaholic and just, you know, just drunk with, with uh, incredible power. Of course, that person is Darth Vader, a.k.a. Anakin Skywalker. So now that we know, is he evil or is it just a really bad personality disorder? Let's define what a personality disorder is. A, an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates markedly from expectations of the individual's culture. This pattern is manifested in two or more ways. One, cognition, ways of perceiving and interpreting um, self, world, and others. Uh, some people call that your belief system, which is, which is an important piece in all of this. Affectivity, the range, intensity, lability, and appropriateness of emotional response. How you feeling? Interpersonal function and impulse control. Part of, more, uh, more information on the personality disorder. Enduring pattern is inflexible and pervasive across a broad range of personal and social situations. Enduring pattern leads to clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other areas. The pattern is stable and of long duration, and its onset can be traced back to at least adolescence or early adulthood. The enduring pattern is not better accounted for as manifestation or consequences of another mental disorder. The enduring pattern is not due to drugs and alcohol or other type of medical condition. Defining what a personality disorder is. Characteristics of a personality disorder. Number one, poor relationships. Number two, unstable jobs. Number three, family dysfunction. Number four, highly manipulative. Number five, self-serving. Number six, lonely or sad, or both. Number seven, aggression. 
Number eight, inappropriate affect. Number nine, disregard for others. That's a big one. Empathy, lack thereof. Disregard for the rules. Low, low empathy. Grandiosity. Instant gratification. Low self-esteem. Personality disorders are developed because of the following. Double bind communication, which I'll talk about. Saying yes and no at the same time, and I'll give you guys an example about that. Trauma, physical, emotion, mental, emotional, or sexual abuse, loss, or death. A useful tool in determining the type of trauma is the biopsychosocial model. Lack of safety nets in a person's life. No one is there. No one is in their lives, um, and they have to go about it by themselves, or at least they think that. The family dynamic is, 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 is pretty messed up. You are what your family says you are, pseudo self versus actual self. We're gonna get into that. And then the view of self, world, and others. So let me just, let me just circle back here to double bind communication. A double bind communication is when someone is giving you mixed messages. So I'll give you a very basic example. But as a child, and this is, this is, as a child, a mother sitting on sitting in the living room or her on her, or her bed in her bedroom and she calls for the child come here child let me let me give you a hug i miss you i love you and the child runs to her and wants a hug and is so happy and to the last second the mother pushes her pushes her away him away and says don't come near me you smell don't come near me i don't like you don't come near me i don't love you now these this is an extreme example but the fact is, is that if you grow up in a household with double bind communication and you don't know where you stand, you don't know if yes means no or no means yes, you start to take on a warped sense of the world around you and your belief system. Who do you trust? If you can't trust your mother or your father, but let's talk about the mother for a second, who can you trust in the big bad world? And many, many times it's very confusing. And this could be the budding seeds of a personality disorder. Somebody who views things that are not part of the social norm and, and part of the extremes and is very angry, agitated, narcissistic, all about me. And what do I get out of it? Trauma. Trauma is a major part um, of, of whether a personality disorder is developed. Uh, think about anybody that's been abused for a good portion of their life within their family system, in their family system, mental, emotional, physical, sexual, all of that stuff can lead towards a personality disorder, which means that your belief system uh, and your thoughts and your feelings are so skewed that it just does not match with the social norms in the environment around you. Lack of safety net. This is an important one people will miss out on. Typically speaking, in a family setting, there is going to be either one or two or maybe multiple people that an individual feels good around. Uh, they trust them. They like them. They explain the world to them. Um, many times um, when someone is developing a personality disorder, they don't have this role model. They don't have that person that they can go to that can explain things when things just don't seem right. Um, family dynamic. So you have what I call the pseudo self, which is the pseudo self versus the actual self. So I'll give you a silly example. So you're sitting at the dinner table with, you know, with your family and you're having a good time and, you know, you're eating and all of a sudden you burp or you fart and you are chastised for that. I mean, real bad. And every time you do something like that, you, you let's say you talk loud or you tell a joke that's a little inappropriate um, and you're told to shut up, be quiet, don't say that, you can't behave that way, put your fork on the left side, not the right side, um, eat with your mouth closed, it's constant, constant. You develop what's called a pseudo self. That pseudo self gets you through those family dynamic, um, uh, episodes versus <clears throat> versus your actual self <clears throat> who might be very artistic and 
and and and humor oriented and, and want to do things a little bit differently so so that's another thing uh view of self world and others um beliefs that you have become rules and that's how you deal with uh with everything around you um alfred adler talked a lot about self world others how do you view yourself well the best way to to find out how you view yourself is to really take inventory of it and then ask how do others view you and see if it matches other people your friends and family how do they view you and how do you view them does it match you'd be surprised at at how out of sync that you are and then the world around you is the world a safe place is it an unsafe place frankly speaking if you come from a family where it's not safe you're probably going to think the world is not safe and that will set you up with a certain type of belief system so defining what a personality disorder is characteristics of a personality disorder simply put how do you know who is a personality disorder so they are the clients who drive you crazy clients tend to these type of clients when you see them in treatment tend to be having a good time in treatment driving the staff crazy and their uh and their peers it's entertainment to them it's not therapy they are constantly trying to escape just for the high of escaping also treatment is an escape for them from reality they're funny but in a real severe sarcastic way are they funny so it's not really uh, uh, normal humor um they're voyeuristic they love to watch others while they participate in treatment a place to fall in love or get into a relationship they're the best at it a lot of treatment romances a lot of treatment marriages a lot of treatment babies occur because of budding personality disorders a place to meet friends it's actually a social mechanism a place to reenact their family problems so you can imagine how insane that would be a place to tell stories and do what i call confabulation which kernels of truth but generally speaking the entire story that they tell is a lie personality disorders can be anything they want in the treatment setting three common personality disorder types schizoid antisocial and dependent now are you going to see other personality disorder types in a treatment setting yes these are just the most researched ones these are the ones that antisocial and dependent personality disorder so we're going to get in into all of that and which one shows up the most so on and so forth so three common personality types you've got schizoid personality type their excess behaviors that distance and create isolation involve silence involve passivity somewhat resistance in their passivity their excess of thinking about needing space relationships being messy undesirable and problematic always drama their excess of feelings being alone life being bland and unfulfilling what's the point blankness or withdrawn autonomy and emptiness with an emphasis on blankness and emptiness also their excess of interpersonal functioning that involves treating others as an annoyance or as intrusive treating people as replaceable objects so in other words think of like a uh, uh at the end of a pencil you know uh, um you know an eraser everybody's an eraser to them their excess of their sense of self well their sense of self is that they're alone they're empty they're a misfit sort of like you know the island of misfit toys misunderstood their excess of outcomes involving being overlooked being left out and low level of self-care so these people they're they're disheveled they could look homeless they're withdrawn they're they're, they're going to want to fly under the radar antisocial their excess behavior attack 
involve aggression, lie, cheat, steal, break rules, hurt others. Their excess of, of thinking is how to get away with things. Um, themselves, very narcissistic. How to con others. The world being a dog-eat-dog -dog world, being entitled. They also have excess feelings about being mistreated by others. Again, entitlement. Outrage and self-righteousness, putting people on the stand. Anger, fearing being a victim. Also, interpersonal uh, functioning, excess of interpersonal functioning involves exploitativeness, lying, physical violence, treating others as weak or patsies. Uh, their sense of self, being a loner, being, being strong and autonomous, a winner in a world of losers, needing to look out for only themselves. And then outcomes is trouble with law, trouble with people, trouble with love, trouble with finance. It's always somebody else's fault. Um, they don't care for others. They don't tell the truth. Um, they're only thinking about how they can benefit they lack empathy, guilt, remorse. Dependent personality disorders or self-help seeking are attaching, they're very clingy. They're caretakers, so they'll take care of you. They just won't deal with their own issues. Uh, desperately needing others' validation, uh, fear of being alone, and very submissive. Helpless, weak needy, needing a strong person to lean on. They, uh, they look at outcomes as, well, they got to conform, uh, lack of individuality, stagnation, status quo, don't move too much. Um, Self-defeating behavior, are, they, they cannot be self-sufficient, have to rely on other people, cannot be dependent. Um, they're not strong, they're weak. Uh, they struggle with independence and achievement. Um, they, they struggle with their sense of self as being self-sufficient. So the history of personality disorders as it relates to treatment, the question I have is, whatever happened to the cuckoo who flew over the nest? Mental health treatment in the late 60s and early 70s, and, and, and it forever changed the landscape of how to view mental illness in the public eye. Um, Ken Kersey's novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a tremendous movie uh, starring uh, Jack Nicholson as R.P. McMurphy, but it showed the horrors that go on for the mentally ill and frankly for personality disorders. Um, because you're a personality disorder, and as R.P. McMurphy said, he likes to F too much and fight too much. Um, does that make him a bad person? And um, Nurse Ratchet thought, so, thought that it did, and they performed a lobotomy on him. So uh, things have changed drastically since then um, for the better, uh, but it still exists out there. And personality disorders are, are a group of folks that are not getting um, the attention that, that they're needed um, and so that they can heal and, and live better lives. So I get to the part where we, we, we talk about the five laws of personality disorder intervention. Number one, the fundamental goal of all personality disorder intervention is to improve adaptation. Number two, all intervention takes place within managing symptoms. Let's manage symptoms not the disease. Within a treatment context, you can manage symptoms. Remember that, that's a law. That's one of the laws, if you will. And yeah. uh, All clients can be managed, some can be treated. Uh, antisocial uh, personality disorder, a lot of times can be managed and treated because of the consequences of going to prison. If you try to treat someone who is not, you will make things worse. So if you treat somebody who's not a personality disorder, um, that's why it's so important not to hone in on traits, 
but somebody who is a true personality disorder, um, they they will deal with treatment differently than somebody who is not. The challenge with personality disorders, what does the client value? How does someone show they value something? When the client starts to identify what they truly value, treatment can begin. Client success is related to the nature of their therapeutic relationship formed with the therapist. Type of interventions are critical to the success of personality disorder. And of course, the place to begin is their perception of self, world, and others. Here are the goals for personality intervention, personality disorder intervention. Reduce symptoms of access one and two. Improve maladaptive behaviors to an adaptation of life. Uh, clients to manage and handle their life more effectively. Small gains. Question belief system to make decision to do something about it. In other words, 